Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Note that we don't charge for the picks. It's a donation system. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I'd like to follow up on two prior NFL videos that I made. The NFL schedules have been released now, right? We now know the order of the games that these teams are going to play. Now, in an earlier video, I recommended that futures bettors take a hard look at the New Orleans Saints, right? Their road schedule, in my opinion, is soft. This team has a Super Bowl winning coach. They have a Super Bowl winning quarterback. They play indoors, which is tough for some of their opponents. Well, now the schedule has been released. And if you're a futures better, you have to be salivating at the mouth. Let's look at the regular season. Right? The Saints clearly offer compelling value as a futures play. You're getting them right now at outsized odds. Understand, in the regular season, the Saints do not face a team that made the playoffs last year until week eight. Let me repeat that. In the regular season, the Saints do not face a team that made the playoffs last year until week eight. Then, let me tell you what happens. They face the Green Bay Packers at home right after that they travel to Carolina that's one of the toughest road games of the year for them but again Carolina is a divisional opponent the Saints have been watching playing against Cam Newton twice a year right so they're not gonna be surprised by Carolina's level of intensity defensively or by Cam Newton's mobility as a quarterback. The meat and potatoes of the Saint season starts week 10 when they face San Francisco. The next week they play Cincinnati. The week after that they play Baltimore. Here's what you need to know. Believe it or not, all three of those games are at home right the schedule couldn't break better for them so you're talking about a schedule where they'll be able to start quickly right keep in mind the Saints made the playoffs last year and won a playoff game the Saints will be able to start quickly because they don't face any playoff teams from last year the teams they play are in rebuilding mode. They start the season at Atlanta. Atlanta was well outside of playoff consideration last year. They had a terrible year. The next game is at Cleveland. Right? Cleveland is rebuilding. Not just their team. They're rebuilding their front office. Right? Cleveland's looking for a quarterback in the NFL draft. The following week, they play Minnesota at home. Right Now, Minnesota's quarterback is Matt Castle. Minnesota missed the playoffs last year. I would argue that Minnesota is also rebuilding. After that, they play the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. The Marcus Weir, gone. Miles Austin, gone. Dallas doesn't really have a good home field advantage. After that they play Tampa Bay at home. Then they have a bye week. Then they come back and they play at Detroit. Right now Detroit has a new coach. Detroit is rebuilding. 
you'll be hard pressed to find a better team with a softer first seven weeks than the New Orleans Saints right the fact that they play most of their hard games at home right Green Bay San Francisco Cincinnati Baltimore should tell you that this is a compelling futures prop right they should not be as lowly rated by the casinos as they are right now now let's switch gears in an earlier video I said stay away from the San Francisco 49ers right this is an elite team that has now gone to three straight NFC championship games also according to reports their running back Marcus Lattimore you may recall him from college right he was a surefire first round pick until he blew out his knee well apparently he's looking great in interviews he says he's back to being a hundred percent so what's not to like well let's go through it let's talk about the schedule now keep in mind the Saints don't play any playoff teams from last year for the first seven weeks of the season you know what the 49ers unfortunately play the Philadelphia Eagles week four they play the Kansas City Chiefs week five those are home games okay fair enough week six they play the Rams okay fine by the way that games in St. Louis right I'm just telling you many wise guys believe that the St. Louis Rams are gonna be one of the stories of this coming year look at their record from last year look at Zach Stacy they're running back now let's say the Niners are still looking tough up until that point week seven they play the Denver Broncos in Denver so let's compare and contrast the Saints an indoor team with a very profound home field advantage plays no playoff teams from last year the first seven weeks the 49ers play three Eagles Chiefs and Broncos then of course when they come back from a bye week eight they face the Rams a second time right the second time around is always difficult then after they play the Rams they have to travel to New Orleans to play the Saints I would say that this team is gonna have rough sledding early right keep in mind by the way as tough as those first 10 weeks are they're still looking at two games against the defending champion Seattle Seahawks they're also looking at a game against the San Diego Chargers this is a brutal schedule as good as this team has been they're gonna be up against it I would argue with three playoff teams from last year in the first seven weeks of the season this team could be derailed let's talk about other things that could derail this team in the offseason there was a rumor that Jim Harbaugh was being discussed in a trade with the Cleveland Browns right that rumor has been confirmed right certain team officials have said yeah we inquired about Jim Harbaugh also we know that Pete Carroll is now making a lot more money than Jim Harbaugh that apparently the 49ers don't consider three consecutive NFC championship game appearances enough of a reason to tear up Jim Harbaugh's current contract we also know that Jim Harbaugh is a personnel guy excellent recruiter when he was at Stanford excellent right but we also know that Harbaugh former NFL player former NFL quarterback he knows about what it takes to play in the league we also know that he's not the GM that he doesn't have the power of let's say a Pete Carroll his college rival at USC right Jim Harbaugh remains unsigned that's a bad sign there have also been reports in the last 12 months 
that some people in the locker room had grown tired of Jim Harbaugh, who's kind of a rah-rah coach who might not wear well. Now the rumors became so loud that Anquan Bolden felt a need to dispel them in the press. That's never a good sign. Let's talk about Colin Kaepernick for a second. Colin Kaepernick was in talks with the 49ers for a new contract. Right? This is a guy who, of course, had them in the red zone with a chance to win the Super Bowl two years ago, then had them in the red zone with a chance to win the NFC last year. Of course, the 49ers have botched this. There was an incident being reported on TMZ that I feel TMZ has overblown. Would you believe that during contract talks with Colin Kaepernick, the team decided, hey, because of this incident, let's hold off on finishing these talks. How could that possibly engender trust going forward between Kaepernick and the team? So right now, Colin Kaepernick one of the best young quarterbacks in this league, of course, is in limbo contract-wise, right? The talks won't continue, I guess, until the 49ers find out more about the incident and find out more about Colin Kaepernick, right? That's the team's prerogative, but let's just say the relationship here was not warm and fuzzy like it is with, let's say, Drew Brees and the Saints or Tom Brady and the Patriots. Then you have Alden Smith. Mr. I have a bomb at the airport. Right? Mr. I have a gun at my party. Right? The team, of course, is rumored to be seriously thinking about not exercising his contract option, even though this premier sack rusher would come at a discount to his market price. Right, that situation is a bit ridiculous and volatile. Right, let's just say that that situation can't be helping the team. Then you have Dante Whitner. Oh, excuse me, he's no longer with the 49ers. This key part of their defense was allowed to leave in the offseason. Navarro Bowman, the last time we saw him, his leg was bent in a weird shape. His knee was being blown out. That's a problem. Then, of course, you throw in the lack of a speed receiver. Now, I personally believe that Crabtree, Michael Crabtree, has some of the best hands in the game. But he doesn't have what the great Jim Brown would call a fourth gear, right? He's more of a great possession type receiver. He's not Randy Moss. He's not going to stretch the field. You remember Randy Moss. That's the guy the Niners let leave the team after their Super Bowl season. I don't believe he has been replaced. Guys like Richard Sherman believe that Michael Crabtree is not an elite receiver. Understand, I believe Anquan Bolden is a future Hall of Famer. Look at his numbers. But he's not a speed receiver either. Right? This team might be lacking a vertical game to some extent. Now let's talk about home field. You know what? They're playing in a new park. I know there's going to be excitement. I know the crowd's going to be in it. But let's figure it out. The Niners haven't played at this park. They don't know this park better than their opponents do. We don't really know what the dynamics of this park are going to be. We don't know if these Niners are built to play in this new stadium. Some teams, the Cowboys, christen new stadiums by not doing much better than their opponents during home games. Let's just say the Niners, it's an open question on whether they'll have the kind of home field advantage that the Seattle Seahawks in their division have. So, the casinos have priced the 49ers for perfection. They're looking at the past record and saying this team is an elite team that's made three straight NFC Championship games. But as they tell you when it comes to investing, past performance is no indication of future performance. Right here, the red flags 
are all around. It looks to me like the Cleveland Browns value Jim Harbaugh more than the San Francisco 49ers. It looks to me that key people at key positions like Colin Kaepernick haven't been signed long term. Alden Smith, that situation's unraveling. This schedule with teams like the Eagles, the Chiefs, the Broncos in Denver, the Saints in New Orleans, it looks like a nightmare. So, as you compare and contrast the NFL odds, given that casinos are giving you more leverage to take the Saints than the 49ers, just keep in mind that the Saints have certain things going for them that the Niners don't. We know Sean Payton is loved. <laughs> we know that. Right? We, we know the Saints have a decided home field advantage. We also know, compared to the 49ers, the Saints have the much easier schedule. So give this a look. I think now that the schedules have been released, what I said before the release of the schedules is now painfully obvious. Even though the casino's giving you more to take the Saints, the Saints are a much better futures play than the San Francisco 49ers. We'll continue to cover other teams in football. Let me know what you think, though, about these teams and these schedules. The schedules are posted online, uh, both on the team websites, on the NFL.com uh, website as well. Compare and contrast and let us know your thoughts. Let's have a discussion. The goal here in the comment section to this video should be to beat the casino. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you give us a look at gamblersadvisory.com and dwyervip.com. Also, dwyersportsbetting.com, the same website as Dwyer VIP. Thanks for stopping by.